hi everybody i'm just dropping in for a minute just to drop a jewel just just a little tip i'm just gonna you know just a little piece i just want to put y'all on notice right quick um and this might resonate with some people but it may not resonate with everybody but if it don't resonate with you if it don't apply let it fly but for the people that it do resonate with i want you to hear me out anytime you are in the space with low self-esteem ass bitches, they're always going to have a problem and an issue with anything you do. Let me, let me repeat that. Anytime you're in a space with people who have a self-esteem de deficit and they have self-esteem issues that don't have shit to do with you, nothing to do with nothing you've done to them, but a knee-jerk reaction for people who feel that way is to gaslight you. It's to make it seem like you're the one with the issue and you're the one with the problem. And you're the one who has some sort of something going wrong with you. And when I say low self-esteem ass bitches, I'm not talking about females because y'all already know that males, some of the biggest bitches I know are men. I'm talking about men, if you're in a room or in a space or communicating with a male or a female who have a self-esteem deficit and they see you as a threat. And I'm not talking about in this part of the brain. I'm talking about in the back part of the brain, their subconscious. If they, they the occipital, that part of the brain, um, they don't even know they're doing it. But for whatever reason, everything you do, it's an issue. Every outfit you wear, why you choose that, the makeup choice you wear, the car you drive, whatever move you're making in your personal life, they're going to have a critique about it because their issue really isn't the moves you're making. Their issue is with you and the issue that they're having with you don't have shit to do with you. The issue that they really truly underline have is with themselves because they look at you and they want to be you. They look at you and they're jealous of the accomplishments that they perceive you've made or the status that they perceive you have don't have shit to do with you, but they're gonna have an issue. I have dealt with this with friends, so-called friends. I've dealt with this with coworkers. I've dealt with this with family. I can just walk in the room and somebody will make a critique about an outfit that I'm wearing or makeup choice or the way I sit down and nibble on a plate of food. It's always something that people have. And it took me a while to realize, but I realized it, that the issue that they have is not with you. The issue that they have is with themselves. They have the self-esteem issues. And what they wanna do is they wanna project that shit off on you and make it seem like you're the one with the problem. It just kills me how people really, really need to do a mental health check on themselves. Like really need to do a mental health check. And you could be the best friend, best cousin, sibling, whatever it may be. And that person will just flip the fuck out and switch up on you because of some shit that they're dealing with that don't have shit to do with you. And the first thing you're thinking is what the hell's going on, but it ain't you. So people need to learn how not to personalize that shit and realize that the people who have a problem with you, they're the ones with the issue. Like literally, they watch you, they see you making moves that maybe they haven't had a chance to make or maybe they're not in a position to make. And the first thing they do is come at you like you're the one with the problem. So I just wanna drop that in here real quick to let y'all know that you're not the one with the issue, it's them. And the, a quick way for you to know if they're dealing with a self-esteem deficit is for you to sit back and you look at their life and you sit up and you watch how they move. You should always watch more than you speak. You should always observe and listen and hear. And you can also feel the energy when they're around you. You can have a person sitting next to you and they can be the best friend, you, your ace, you've been there for them, they've been there for you, and the next day they sit around you, you can feel all kind of negative vibes coming from them. You don't even have to necessarily be with them. You can be sitting in your bed across town and you can feel negative vibes. You know what I'm saying? If you're in tuned with yourself. That's why I always stress about self-love 
I always stress about self-realization and self-awareness so that you can keep yourself in check and continue maintenance on your self-esteem. Because just because you're in a healthy space right now don't mean you will be next week. Shit happens, life happens. And life can sometimes throw you right hooks to your chin that can juggle and, and alter the way you view yourself. But if you keep that self-maintenance up and you keep um, a barometer on how you feel about you and continue to strengthen and work on your relationship with yourself, the, the shit will hit a little, the, le the impact will be less and it won't hit as hard. But just like you're working on you and you might be really in tune with who you are, there's a lot of people out here, people at your job, people in your family that aren't doing that. And they're just letting life roll, like they're rolling with the punches and they're letting life drag them and now they want to fucking take that shit out on you and you ain't did shit to nobody. So what I want y'all to do is to focus on you and to really, really watch. Now, I gave you guys your homework session for the first one, but I'm really, really wanting you to take this second half to really focus after you already got your list together. You already know exactly what you want to do in regards to your list, what you need to do, what you really need to do is to set out a plan, a step-by-step -step plan, how you're gonna alter your relationship with those draining people. The ones with the self-esteem deficits, the ones that only wanna use you. They, they, they don't understand the laws and the rules of reciprocity where they'll sit up and they just wanna take, take, take. And I'm not talking about money. I'm not talking about, uh, I'm talking about money. I'm talking about time. I'm talking about emotional. Um, they wanna come and they wanna unload all their problems. Excuse me, y'all. I'm going, I'm driving, but I know the sun is in my face. Hopefully you can see me. They want to talk about money. They want to talk about time. They want to talk about everything. But anytime you need to just vent, they're never there for you. They're never there for you on a micro level. They're never there for you on a macro level. They're never there. But all they want to do is take people like that. Because in any type of relationship, it's always a give and take. There might be a time where you might need me and there might be a time where I might need you. And, and the time that I might need you may not cost you a dime, but sometimes a person just needs somebody to be there. But if you're the, always the one that's there for everybody else and ain't nobody there for you when you need them, or you're not comfortable asking for help because you just don't have that type of rapport, but everybody and their mama got their hands out for you and their, and their ear out and their heart out and they want you to give, give, give. But the second you ask for something, they never even offer. I'm going to need you to alter that relationship because the second you alter it and you cut them people off, you will notice a huge, huge release. And you will notice your self-esteem boosting and you will notice that you're not being drained anymore and your mag magic will be able to pop on a different level than it ever has before because you don't have a whole bunch of hands in the pot taking from you emotionally and spiritually and even financially. That's the second part of your homework. We're in the last few days of this year and I'm gonna need all of you guys to focus on that because going into the new year, it should be a new you. I know that's a cliche. Everybody says it, new year, new me, you new year, new me. But this year, as I've stated emphatically before, was on some fuck shit. 2020 was on some bullshit. And we're going into a completely new decade. Let's, let's, let's just leave it all in the past. Let's leave it all. I mean, it's the second year of the decade, but y'all get my point. Let's leave it all in the past. And let's start off on the good foot like the old folks say. This is homework session number two. Draining ass people, you need to set a plan to alter how you're gonna fuck with them moving forward. Set a date and set stipulations. You might have a mother-in-law who always asking you for shit but don't never wanna give when you're the family babysitter. They all dump your, their kids off on you, but the second you need somebody to watch your kids so you can do some self-care and go to the nail shop, nobody's around, then you need to cut it off. As much as you love those kids, and I get it, because I love children too, but you're not available. And a lot of times you need to pick a day of the week where maybe you'll talk to people and listen, but the other six days, you're not available by phone. They can text you and call you all day long, but you're not responding. And you do not have to feel guilty. And don't let people guilt you and to being available for them 24 seven. Their emergency is not your emergency. Their crisis is not your crisis. 
Because when you're in a crisis, where the fuck are they? All right. Thank you. I am the African witch bitch. This is homework session part two. Hopefully you'll you do both of them and rewatch these videos over and over so that you can know exactly what you need to do for you. Ashe.